I had an abortion and I'm still glad I did. 18 years later, I want kids and I want to be a wife. But if it's not in God's plans, then I will still be okay. All right, so let's chat about that comment. 18 years later, she still wants kids. She still wants to be a wife. You want to know why, guys? Because one of the spiritual implications of abortion is delay. Contrary to what people try to make you believe, everything that happens has to happen in the spirit first. Everything that happens. Everything that we see in this earth naturally is governed by spiritual rules, laws, and principles. So when you have an abortion, you are establishing, or in some cases, reestablishing a demonic blood covenant, okay? So because you're establishing that covenant, that legally binding agreement, because you're partnering with the kingdom of darkness in your actions, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the circumstance, right? Now the, kingdom of uh, now the kingdom of darkness has access to you. Another girl in the comments said she had an abortion and she can't conceive anymore and now she has to do I I IVF. Yeah, and guess what? IVF is not going to help her. You want to know why? Because there's a spirit of anti-progress. There is a spirit of barrenness on her that has full access to her because she has not broken that demonic covenant. Okay? So... Let me talk about the spiritual implications and how they manifest in the natural. One of the spiritual implications of abortion, most common, spirit of infirmity. You have that abortion, you go against God's will for your body in that moment, okay? And then you're attacked with a spirit of infirmity. A seed is planted in the spirit for you to get sick. So this may look like PCOS. This may look like fibroids. This may look like endometriosis. This may look like um, ovarian cancer. This may look like abdominal pain that you just cannot resolve. No one knows what it is, but you just have this really bad abdominal pain. This may look like absolutely incapacitating, horrendous periods, okay? That's how it manifests in the natural. Another implication of abortion, anti-progress. Every single time you take one step forward, something happens where you take 10 steps back. You finally save 10K. And the next day, your car is like, hmm, I don't feel so well. It's your alternator. It's your transmission. It's your engine, right? Now, you got to take six of that 10K that you just saved for a whole new engine that you just saved, Okay. That may look like um, you have a great idea for a business. Great idea for a business. You get people to help you, to um, fund it, to work with you and everything. And then one day you just stop work. You, you, you just stop working on it. You get these great ideas, you get help, you get started working on them, but you never complete them. You start reading books and you never finish them. That is a spirit of anti-progress. Why? You open up the door for it when you had that abortion, okay? Um, spirit of barrenness. Now you're grown, you want to have children, but you cannot have children. Barrenness, right? So the spirit thing is the spirit of barrenness, and the natural is that you keep miscarrying. You want to know why, you guys? Because the Latin translation, the, the Latin word for abortion, I think it's aborti, is miscarry. It's miscarry, right? Maybe in your family you see that people die at a really early age. 40, 35 years old, everybody dies. 28 years old, people are dropping dead. Spirit of untimely death. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you'll talk to guys and like they're really into you for like a good three, four months, a good two years. And one day they, they wake up and never speak to you again. Spirit of rejection. These things are spiritual. So going to the next opportunity, try, um, someone said there's always gonna be another man and another baby horrible advice because guess what the spiritual laws still reign supreme okay so the reason why i said don't have an abortion because if your life looks bad now it's gonna look 10 times worse after you have that abortion i'm telling you this okay demonic blood covenants are no joke blood in the spirit is no joke now i was under demonic blood covenants myself not from abortion but from my bloodline Okay, this is why I'm telling y'all not to have an abortion because you might have kids in the future, and guess what? Your kids will see all these things um, ridiculously difficult periods, um, rejection in terms of their dating life, 
rejection in terms of opportunities, anti-progress, all of those things. Why? Because you partnered with the spirit, of, I mean, with the kingdom of darkness, right? And because God said in, the, in Exodus 20, I think, that he will visit the iniquity of them that hate him to the third and fourth generations, Okay, God is not playing. Contrary to what people want y'all to believe, God is the same God he was in the Old Testament. Same God he was. So, if you are a woman that is struggling with infertility and you've had an abortion, if you are a woman that is struggling with infertility, period, you need to go on a fast and you need to break the covenant with the spirit of abortion because I can almost guarantee you, more than likely, someone in your bloodline had an abortion. Okay, maybe it wasn't your mom, but maybe your dad was cheating on your mom and made his mistress have an abortion because yes men can receive these well they do receive these implications so like if you have an abortion your boyfriend is going to deal with all these same implications spirit of infirmity spirit of infertility of anti-progress of anti-marriage and of rejection at least at least those are like the bare minimum things but there's so much more okay if you're dealing if you see any of these things in your life Go on a fast, repent to God, break these covenants. I did a video on how to break the covenant. So you're going to break the covenant. And then as long as you see these things, you might take a five day break from fasting or take a month break for fasting or whatever, but you're going to keep fasting. You're going to keep praying because these things have gotten a ranking in your life. There are very real implications to abortion. If you have not had abortion and you are considering having abortion, don't have one. Do not have one because you're going to make things so much harder. And then when you go to God and you pray and you ask him for help, guess what? He, he, he's not going to be able to help you. You forfeited the help that he already had for you. When you disobey God's word, you're forfeiting his help. When you do things outside of God's will, you're forfeiting his help. And when it comes to demonic blood covenants, God hates innocent bloodshed. So you can't partner with the kingdom of darkness and then go to God and say, God, I need your help. You can't do it like that. So yeah, if you haven't had your abortion, there's a reason why God is having me mention this. I've never had an abortion. So there's a reason why God is having me really, you know, hammer this in. Because y'all are about to give birth to, to deliverers. Y'all are about to give birth to a generation of deliverers. And the way God is going to bless you and honor you for being obedient, even though you were rebellious and disobedient at first, you know, messing with that man and sleeping with him and everything, even though you were wrong at first, God is going to honor you being obedient. Okay. If you need a, a better understanding of these things, um, look up the Abrahamic covenant look up the Davidic covenant, okay? Like look up covenants in the Bible and read about covenants. You can understand how covenants are formed. Also look up um, Deuteronomy 28 because that makes it really plain. Like in the, in the, I think it's, yeah, in the latter, not the, not, 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 not the latter, but in the beginning of Deuteronomy 28, he's talking about how like, if you do these things, if you follow my, my word and everything, I will bless you. Like you'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed in your coming in, blessed in your going out. You, one thing about you is you are going to be blessed. You'll be blessed in the fruit of your body. But then if you keep reading, if you keep reading the entire chapter of Deuteronomy 28, he explains how if you go against him, you'll be cursed. How you'll be cursed and you're going in, cursed and you're coming out. You know, how you, um, you're, you'll build houses and you won't live in them. You know, he talks about that. And he's not saying he's going to do it to you. What, what happens is that when you disobey God, he now turns you over to yourself. You, rel you relinquish the blessings that he has for you. You forfeit the blessings that he has for you. You partner with the enemy, so you get what the enemy gives you, which is curses. Okay. And people saying, well, you were fornicating. That's a sin. If you're already in sin by fornicating, why would you make your situation worse by having an abortion? Repent. Turn back to God. Don't get in more sin. Come on now. Y'all are not dumb. Bye.